Today on the show, we break down and review episode three of the live action Fallout TV show. Buckle up, everybody. We're headed into the wasteland. Welcome to Fallout Fans, a limited series podcast where we discuss all things Fallout, including and especially the live action Fallout TV series. Watch all eight episodes of the first season of Fallout available exclusively on Amazon Prime Video. Then come back here, join us as we break down and review each episode. Fallout Fans is brought to you by Megadads. Find us on megadads.org or Megadads on YouTube. Please give us a sub. We've gotten a lot of great feedback, and people are listening, surprisingly, but thank you so much for being here. Uh, The audio version can be found wherever you get your podcasts. We use a special methodology to help us break down and review episodes. Today, we talk about the best moments of the episode, the visuals, standout performances, discuss how the show can stand up to fan scrutiny or not, talk about what we hated, and cap things off with a five-star review. This is your spoiler warning. Watch the show for yourself, then come back here and join us. Please leave a comment and let us know what you think. Leave your own review. We got a lot of comments last time, so thank you so much for that. Today, I'm joined by my best bud. He radiates charisma, Clay Howard. How are you, Clay? Doing good, man. How are you? It is going to be great. So episode three, we'll talk about it really quickly. um, We did want to talk a little bit about a recommendation for new people. What game should they play in the Fallout franchise if they're going to hop in? I think I lean toward Fallout 4, personally. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. I know it's not necessarily everyone's favorite of the series, but I do think it is the easiest to jump in. Uh, I think that there's a lot of quality of life improvements over Mm -hmm. three that make it easier for first time players. Um, I think three is great. I think Fallout 76 is okay. Um, But I think ultimately four is just a little bit, makes a little more sense uh, jumping in for new players. I think that there's a lot of themes from that game that are also kind of present in the show. This whole um, leaving the vault to find your your family uh, is, is a big part of the, the plot line for four. And so uh, I, I see some similar similarities there, uh, whereas you don't get that in like 76 and stuff. So that's my personal, my personal opinion. Obviously the other two games, uh, three and 76 aren't bad options either, but my vote is for four. The player counts are going up across all games. So Fallout 76, the online like MMO like um, Fallout 4, the most modern entry is going to get a update, next gen update with increased resolutions and some other improvements on the 28th of April. So that's just gonna keep going up. And I would agree that Fallout 4 would be a good entry. I have to recommend Fallout 3. The reason it's I'm not recommending New Vegas is because there's a lot of open desert especially in the beginning of that game and you can feel like it's kind of more empty whereas fallout 3 nails the franchise mood i would say a lot of the themes the gameplay is still decent vats is still there where you slow down time and you're able to target particular parts on an enemy and i think it hits all the boxes for me Uh, they're all good but that's my recommendation right there if you're if you're new to the series if you're new to the franchise you've never played try any of them game pass is a really good way to get in since you know bethesda games are on there now which is great so dabble play try out everything for yourself let's get right into it then episode three of the fallout tv show and we start with our first segment strength where we talk about the best moments of the episode i'm gonna lead it off with you clay Episode three, what did you think? Best moment. The best moment of the episode is the very final moments of the episode. Right at the end, uh, all throughout the episode, we're getting little bits and pieces of the ghoul's backstory, Cooper. And um, it's all kind of leading up to this this big 
moment at the end, which I just think, I don't know, I just think they nailed it really well. Uh, at one point he looks in a bag and, he, and they, oh, you know, they even got your colors right. And my wife looks over at me and goes, I think, I think I, I think he's going to be like the, the spokesperson for vault tech. And I was like, Oh, I was like annoyed that I didn't think of it sooner. Cause in episode one, they go do the thumbs up thing. Do your, do your, your trademark thing. And it was just like, Oh, duh. I should have seen that coming a mile away. And so the very end you're seeing hit this photo shoot with him and he's doing all these different poses. And all of a sudden he throws up that thumb and all of a sudden it, it hits that photo. And then it cuts the episode. And I mean, it wasn't like, like the most complex or like deep thing in the world, but we literally got to see, you know, where Vault Boy came from, basically. Just kind of left with me with a smile at the end of the episode. That was going to be my number one as well. It's just cool, right? Some added lore. I'm going to go again with a more of a niche option for my best moment. And that would just be Norm. Lucy's brother, who remains back in the vault, was going to be a throwaway character. And it turns out that he has depth he has his own struggle going on and they plant these seeds of foreshadowing with minor characters which to me is a sign of a strong show yeah there's action yeah it's theme fallout but is it a good show is there good writing good dialogue and that for me elevated the whole episode because i was just like wow if i can care about the story of a what I thought was going to be a throwaway character. And I love everyone else. Like, this is going to be great. You know, they have a broken water chip. It's revealed in this episode. So it's, they have two months worth of water. And it's like, okay, what do you do with these people also that are raiders and who are going to be taking up food and water because they're decent people keeping them alive? What do we do with them? Who's going to be the new overseer? There's so much happening there you know what happened you know in the other vaults like it's it's just wild so that's my last story. last episode you you said i hope we see more of the vault i'm almost more interested in the vault mm -hmm. storyline than i am what's going on up top it's crazy yeah, like it i is. love what they're doing and I, I think you called it you're like i hope they do more of that i hope we see more of what and i i i, I dude Maybe it's just the video game guy in me. It's like, once you leave the vault, you kind of don't really think about it anymore. Obviously in the games, you, you visit some other vaults and you get to like do different things. But I, I completely did not think that they would keep a subplot going while they're gone, while, while the main character is out and about. And so the fact that they still have her brother acting his butt off and doing great stuff and, and trying to solve this, you know, trying to figure out what's going on down below. Like, I, I think it, I love that they did that. And I think it was a great choice to, to not just kill everybody off at the raid at the beginning, but they like, they kept those characters down there and, and it's, it just keeps getting better and better. I love it. Perception, talking about the interesting or standout visuals of the episode. Clay, what did you think? Anything stand out to you visually in episode three? I thought the, I don't even, I forget what it's called. The finger monster from the water. The gulper, um, bubble, bub, bobbler. Yeah, right? that thing. I yeah. thought, I, th I actually thought, I, I, are the, so those are in the game, right? I, one, I, I wasn't I don't sure. Know. I, I thought it was, a re when I saw the water bubbling, I thought it was going to be a Mylurk or something that I know. Right. Right. Like a little bit more familiar with. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if these are I think, enemies I think these in the are game specific. maybe a game I didn't play or a DLC or something. They I might also just be specific to the show created for the show. I'm not sure. Could be. But, yeah. but regardless, I thought they did a good job with them. Um, I thought they looked pretty cool, especially once they showed the shot of in the mouth and there's these fingers. <laughs> And then uh, eventually them literally pulling on it so hard and the fingers grabbing that it um, literally like pulls the creature's stomach out of it. It like turns itself inside out and all this water and all this crap comes gushing out. I don't know. I just, I, I thought that was, I thought that all looked really good. I, I enjoyed it a lot. So. Is that what happened? I think so. I think they literally, as, as far as I can tell, they pulled the whole thing inside out and it just like its stomach or insides got pulled out because it was holding on with its fingers inside the mouth. And then he pulled with the power armor and it just like, it emptied his insides and his like, his inside came out basically, I think. Perception yeah. wise for me, we have to talk really quickly about the music. It was a banger again. 
for this episode in particular. Music lifted directly from the game, used right on time. It's looking great. The visuals, as we see more and more of the wasteland, whether it be a creature of fighting or, or weapons, it, it's all working. Part where he's fighting with the power armor and he explodes like somebody's head with his with the hand, that visually looked, you know, interesting and, and brutal. And I think that they're nailing the action. When you have these fights happen, it's like big bombastic like just seeing the pistol like being shot what by the he's he's in the water with the power armor and he's just taking pot shots at the creature and i just was like oh i know that gun i know that gun like specifically from the games it's looking really good all over the place so perception wise definitely a winner nothing really in particular though like stood out to me i think it was all just good they continue to nail it endurance can the show endure fan expectations? Now, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the comments that we got on our very own show. We have people watching the videos um, that we're posting on YouTube, so we thank you very much for that. But the odd thing is we got a lot of people coming into the comments section to complain that they hate the show. It was odd. Like, we had multiple comments saying, oh, this show is woke. You know, they had like a, a trans character or something like that, which I think I had noticed when I saw, but then didn't understand that th that it was in real time, like a big deal at all to some people. And it was to them. They're like, oh, they used uh, they pronouns. I was like, what are you talking about? You're insane. The weird things that people are complaining about just goes to show that there's no other real valid criticisms here because if it was then they would have something to say but they're literally hating on this thing going to fan made reviews on youtube just to rally against like wokeness the reality is other people are burning through the show loving it getting rave reviews people are playing the games because they're falling in love with the the world. I mean, obviously you can't please everybody. And I, <laughs> the stuff you're talking about right now, I don't even know what you're talking about. So it, it is interesting. I think I need to get in the comments a little more here, but dude, I, I think this show has proven e even three episodes in that th they're killing it. It's hard to make video game TV shows that are good. There's been a few more recently. Companies are starting to throw more money at television. We call, we call it television streaming, you know, original uh, hour long episodes of things. And so over time they they've gotten better about it and they've learned what works and doesn't work. And so, man, I'm just so relieved that this wasn't a colossal failure. I think, I think fallout is like at an all time high. There's people who have never played these games watching the show, loving it. And like, it's just, it's done wonders for, for the brand and it's awesome. I, I love to see it. So, uh, screw the haters, man. Screw them. Eat my ass. Charisma, talking about standout acting or performances in the episode. I will let you go first for this because I think I know what you're going to say. No, I'm going to say Thaddeus, dude. Thaddeus, you know Thaddeus, the squire? The squire, bro. Oh, my Lord. Okay, dude, go ahead. Lay it on me. Talk talk about turning a corner, man. Yeah, uh, you're right. In the beginning, he's just this like bully redneck guy with a crappy mustache that you yeah. just love to hate but then i mean real fast you you kind of they they kind of flip him on you a little bit and all of a sudden you kind of start he shows up and he's good at his job he's he's a better squire than maximus ever was mm -hmm. he knows what he's doing he's Good helpful point. he saves maximus's life not knowing it's Maximus, obviously. They let him talk about how he feels bad for bullying him and just yeah. he did it because he didn't want to be bullied. And I don't know. I just I just think the actor did a really good job of playing him and kind of turning it because immediately you just want to hate him. And I think Maximus just wanted to like give him crap and everything. And I think really fast, uh, Maximus starts to see this other side of him. I'm really curious to see where they take the character in the coming episodes. 
And yeah. it's just wild because he has the opportunity to like squish his head and basically get rid of his problem of the squire he didn't want around him. And you could see like the power armor, he's holding his hand above his head and he's like <laughs> thinking about it. He's like, should I crush this guy? And we already know Maxim Maximus's morals aren't exactly hardline. Like there's a gray area with this guy. And it, I am intrigued by that duo as well. You never know if the people are going to have mercy on someone in this show, because we've seen it go both ways. I always think that the ghoul's going to show Lucy some mercy at some point and, you know, show that softer side of him. Like the, the episode starts with seeing Cooper in human form in the past and how he didn't want to even fake shoot someone in his movie. And then like later on, he's like giving Lucy no type of human treatment and it's just, it's wild. So when you get those relationships that feel like, okay, there's a connection here. He, They're buddies all of a sudden. Like he goes in the water with him and he's all like, he's like, I'll lead the charge. Like no power armor, just a, just a, like a little scrawny guy. He's like, I got this. He's like, no, you go. He's like, I, I got it. And they're fighting together. I thought it was great. So yeah, I'll agree with you. I think that's a really good choice uh, for, for a good performance. Mine Thanks. is going to be, norm so when you go to the vault and you see what norm and the other survivors are up to there are a couple moments where he just starts to creep me out but he's not a side character anymore he's kind of gonna i think he's gonna step up and maybe lead the morals of everybody in the vault one way or another that's what they're like alluding to and it intrigues me so much every time he was on screen i was a little creeped out and i thought he did really well acting you know, all the emotions, whether it was just aloof or angry or whatever. And he seems dangerous to me, but he's scrawny as hell and he knows it and everyone knows it. But, it, but it's like there's more to him that meets the eye. So I'm looking forward to Norm, surprisingly. So good character to me. Intelligence. Now we want to talk about the dumbest or worst moments of the episode. The wildlife has been like a plus so far. Every time you see an irradiated animal, whether it be like the bear, yoguai, whether it be, you know, a two-headed cow, it's all work so far. And then we have what I think was called the gulper or whatever, the water creature. This was my worst moment because of the coloring on it. I feel made it look not real. However, I know it's based off of a mutated existing animal in nature. I forget what they're called, some type of guppy type thing, but they mm. are salmon colored like that. What put it over the edge for me were the human-like thumbs that are inside the mouth, which was not working for me. It does show up this uh, abomination creature in like at two or three fights in the episode. And it looks better in slow-mo for some reason the second or third time around. But I want you to go. What was your worst moment? No, I want to hear your I want to hear your runner up first. It's the head. When Lucy pulls out the doctor's head in the beginning of the episode, it's like, oh, I had just chopped off this head. And she's like kind of friendly with it and not like super grossed out about it. <laughs> when it looks super gross. She doesn't want to get her hands dirty in this these gross ways. She has hesitancy. But she's so buddy-buddy, like, really quickly with this head. Her handling it and not really flinching about it, planting a tracker in it, and just being like, oh, there you go. There you go, buddy. Like, <laughs> sit here with me and, like, look out at the night sky. It's, And I didn't, I didn't like that very much. How about you? I guess the only thing I could think of is there's a scene where Maximus walks up on these raiders and they're trying to uh, pick apart his power armor. And he basically fights his way over and tries to take it back and they start beating the crap out of him. And then he like sticks, he like gets beat up on the power armor and then like sticks his arm in and like uh, grabs this dude by the head and makes his head explode. And it's just like, it was just kind of clunky and him putting his hand in backwards and then grabbing a dude's head. And it just, if, and then, and I guess the dumbest part then is after he blows up that dude's head, all the other guys who literally have him like, their hands around his neck just run off and it was just like if i were them and he just killed my buddy or whoever that dude is i, I would have just like slit his throat and then taken everything I, I hear you i thought the head actually popping looked better than i thought yeah. it was gonna be agreed but i'll be honest with you because of the angle and what was happening 
I thought the suit had sentience or, or someone was remote controlling it and controlling the hand because they made it seem like he didn't realize it was happening in the moment or something. It was just shot really weird where I thought he, his hand was not behind him in the suit. Like they didn't show him like trying to get his hand in really. And it looked like a weird situation. And, and then I had for, immediately forgot about it. I was just like, okay, that happened and the story just continues. So a bit of an odd choice, maybe some continuity issues with how his limb was like reaching behind him. I don't know. It, 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 for me, it didn't work. I, I don't think that's because the suit's it's actually the other way too. Like it's facing away. So that would mean he put his opposite hand with his back to the suits back in and it reaching around. It just, it, it just yeah. didn't, it didn't make a lot of sense to me. The more I think about it, the worse it gets. Agility, you have to be quick in the wasteland. Now we're gonna go ahead and review the quick story beats, the major character arcs of the episode. The episode begins in the beginning and we have Cooper on set in human form, showing his soft side, how he doesn't even wanna fake harm another actor. They hint at the communism thing where there was a writer who was fired and basically the sentiment of the show is changing because this is what the people want so just shoot the guy in the head and be done with it. So he goes from being hesitant to saying all right I'll do it. He see his uh, wife and his daughter make an appearance again which is very cute. Uh, they have this little flirtatious thing going on and it shows kind of what was lost uh, a little later in the episode one of the recurring themes is um, the ghoul tells the Lucy or Lucy tells the ghoul I forget which one speaks first but it's like you know who are you and it's like I'm you just give it a little time and it comes full circle later in the episode where she's really trying to push against becoming the ghoul and losing her mor morality and it's just so interesting how far those two characters are from each other and what has happened over all these years to make Cooper into the ghoulish person that he is now. I, I, yeah, I think you hit it well. And it's, it's fun seeing his backstory and letting Walton Goggins act without all the prosthetics on and getting to see him killing it. It's awesome. He is killing it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Lucy is traveling the wasteland with a severed head that looks pretty good, I would say. Um, you know, it's obviously yeah. a fake severed head, but, you know, it's creepy. It's, you know, discolored and rotting already. And she's buddy-buddy <laughs> with it for some reason and ends up putting a tracker in it smartly, which will be a plot point later when she loses the head and has to continue tracking it. Then we have the power power armor is damaged from the fight with the ghoul, so Maximus has to do some repairs. He overpays with a tooth to get it fixed, <laughs> and when he comes back, he sees Raiders trying to get at his power armor. And funnily, he speaks with his mouth like all like kind of still numb. Step away from the power armor. Uh, yeah. And I just Dude, thought I, it was hilarious. I love that. What did you think? Aren't those those are just great little they do a lot of those in this and there's another one in this episode I want to hit on later, but they just do fun little things like that where it's it's not cheesy and it's it's just witty enough and it's them not taking themselves too serious because that's that's Fallout to a T. Like Fallout never took itself a hundred percent seriously. Yeah. There was always yeah. a little tongue in cheek going on. And so I, I think the writers of this show just nailed it. They did a great job. Much like Spider-Man, you have Maximus without his powers, without the suit. What is he? Because he is down for the count getting beat by these Raiders and on the floor, he just musters up strength to go and grab a piece of metal and a, a toilet seat and goes at the Raiders a second time after getting his ass beat. I, I thought this was interesting, and, and I like that they did this because I think it set the stage where you're like, okay, this this guy, is he is he capable on his own? And we didn't know that before. We see Lucy in previous episodes like, oh, she's a trained fighter in the vaults, and she can hold her own 
in a one-on-one -on -one combat situation, which was great and impressive, but we hadn't seen him fight be uh, before. What did you think about this showdown, which ends with him using the power armor to squeeze one of their heads into a little grape and squish it? It makes sense. I, we literally, the first time we see Maximus, he's getting the crap beat out of him by uh, <laughs> his other brothers of, of steel. And so it, it makes sense. It's like, yeah, he, he knows how to take a beating. And so... Uh, I think I think a big part of his character too is that he's just not willing to give up. He's very strong-willed, and so even if he's losing a fight, he keeps getting up, and he knows how to take a beating. So I think it it, it didn't feel out of place. Uh, I like like that. I said, the end of the fight was kind of dumb, but other than that, I thought it it was a good scene. The Brotherhood sends a squire to replace because Maximus is posing as Knight Titus, so so they send in the guy who was beating up before. What's his name again? His name is Thaddeus. Thaddeus, the squire. Um, Maximus goes back and forth for a second about, should I just squish his head and doesn't and lets him live and makes him carry his heavy shit and getting a little bit of revenge. Lucy, tracking the head, um, well, walking with the head around the lake, comes face to face with an abomination who swallows a little baby deer and then the head. So she's kind of screwed, and just then, the ghoul catches up with Lucy. So we have Cooper the ghoul come face to face with Lucy, and it's just, it's just kind of brutal. Um, moving on to like the next scene, just because it makes continuity sense to talk about it here, the ghoul uses Lucy as bait. They have this whole dialogue about how he's not actually torturing her like she thinks for no reason, but he is putting her on a on a hook and dipping her in the water and it looks he's waterboarding her i mean it looks cool like it looks scary it looks like she's in you know pain her eyes look so puffy by the end of this episode i feel really bad for lucy she is she is beat up at the end of the second episode she's getting ready to cut that head off and she's like okie dokie and she's still all kind of happy and like really hasn't had a, a too hard of a time yet uh, in the wasteland. And so this episode is kind of a, the beginning of her starting to get taken advantage of. And, um, and so really quickly off the bat, her and the ghoul, uh, become at, at odds real fast. I mean, after episode two, I guess. And so her getting waterboards a little intense and then it, it, it even gets, you know, worse later with her and the ghoul. And so, as I was watching it, I'm like, are, are they not going to have these two become friends? Because it's like a lot of what he's doing to her is really intense. And it's like some of this is hard to come back from. And so uh, as I was watching it, I was a little apprehensive. Like maybe they've taken this a little too far. It's a brutal thing that's going on between them. Norm and the others back in the vault are struggling with how to punish Norm and those who help Lucy escape. And he's pretty aloof to any punishment they could possibly give them. They say that he's done a lot of jobs. He really doesn't care. And he ends up, they're like, here, give the prisoners food. Because they are in the vault taking care of the raiders who were left over in the failed attack. So, interesting. What they're doing is trying to do a, a new election for who's going to be the overseer of the vault. And there's going to be like a power struggle. And they say, what do we do with the Raiders? And they're talking about teaching them Shakespeare and teaching them soft skills <laughs> and like just the most humane treatment possible. And, you know, Norm's like, maybe we should kill him. And, you know, we have the pregnant lady, which I forget her name, but she's like, yeah, you know, that sounds pretty good. They killed my husband and they don't deserve to live what are your thoughts about the predicament that we have for the people in the vault oh and their water chip is cracked or broken um the water chip is actually a callback to uh, one of the earlier fallout games either one or two where the water chip just helps them you know keep um hydrated keep water flowing and you actually have to go and find or repair a water chip is one of the main goals in fallout one or two so interestingly enough, uh, they have a dilemma where they only have two months of water left, and it's a bit of a shock. I thought this scene was really funny where they're trying to f decide what to do with, with the prisoners. Uh, obviously, us, the viewers, like we know what the obvious answer is. Like, kill these people. They're terrible. And I wasn't going to say that at all, actually. Well, if you were in Fallout, <laughs> you would. You'd be like, kill them. 
You'd, you'd say no mercy if they killed a bunch of your friends. You'd be right there. Mm-hmm. But these guys are so... Shut up. These guys are so, like, naive and stupid that they want to teach them Shakespeare. Like, it's 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 pretty funny. Like, I think it's, it's kind of hilarious that they're so oblivious that they think that they can turn these people who have lived live these really long, hard lives and w- can never be, you know, fixed or changed or whatever. Uh, as you mentioned, we have the Squire and we have Maximus bonding and saying, you know what, maybe he wasn't that bad. He was just beating up on me to save himself. And, you know, I don't feel so bad for not squishing his head. And he's still going to carry my heavy shit, though. And they're hot on the trail of also trying to find the head with that glowing uh, Tic Tac in it. So that's remains the goal in the the MacGuffin right now, keeping everybody around the same area. Everyone fights this guppy salamander thing, and they do end up defeating it. Can I also uh, point out a really funny scene in this with Thaddeus and Maximus? At one point, they find the <laughs> the body of the doctor, <laughs> and they walk up to it, and they're like, "Is this the doctor?" And so Thaddeus walks over with a piece of paper. And puts the the, the, <laughs> the, the the head shot over where the head should be. And I don't know. I just, it, it made me laugh out loud. I thought it was a really funny little thing. And once again, just another great little, a good way to like bring some humor to what can be a really dark show. And then they can just move right on and you don't have to like, they don't overdo it. It's just the littlest amount of humor and it, it's perfect. I loved it. Absolutely. Uh, The ghoul is leading Lucy through the desert. They are not going to get the head, but he needs a fix because his, I'm not sure what it is, but whatever chemical he keeps ingesting to keep himself uh, going is broken. His vials are gone and he has to do something about it. So he is leading her to parts unknown and they end up seeing a billboard for a vault billboard with the vault boy character on it and he just shoots the billboard in disgust and they flash back all the way to when we realize that cooper is doing an advertisement for vault tech and is basically their spokesperson and he's basically like either the inspiration or vault boy himself doing his ceremonial classic thumbs up pose which is just the coolest lore bit that I seen, you know, so far, it's just like, oh, that's, that's great. The way it comes full circle. And that is episode three, the head luck. What do we hope to see in future episodes? If we're lucky, any predictions, clay or anything you want to see? I want more of, of the, the vault. I, I'm loving the, what they're doing, what they're showing down there. Uh, and I'm excited to see more of what, what they have planned. Cause they've got something going on. Um, and I'm really interested to see what happens. There are so many relationships going on. Characters are bouncing off each other really well. I can't really decide who I want to see on screen more. Like Cooper and what's happening with him. Like how did he become what he became? Just because they, they still haven't broke him. They still haven't said like, oh, well, deep down he's good still. That's not there. And they're just, they have him do some brutal stuff. So I, I'm going to go with, I want to see even more of the vault tech Cooper connection and lore about how the ghoul becomes the ghoul. Uh, There are these vials that he needs and I don't know what they are. I just know that he needs them to keep going and I'm sure they're going to get into that. But I want to hear your five star rating. I'm going to go three and a half out of five. Uh, I thought it was great. It gave me a lot of what I was hoping, wanting at coming out of episode two i wanted more lore and backstory for the ghoul we got that the action sequences and like the the enemy that they introduce is okay um not as cool as like the gunfight in episode two we definitely get to see some actors uh and characters come out that haven't really had a chance and i I loved the the beginning of seeing more of, of what it's like in the vault and just the reassurance moving forward that we're still going to be down there and seeing what the, what those idiots are up to. Yeah, three and a half out of five is still a solid episode overall, I think. I am going to agree with you. I'm going to give it a three and a half. There's enough good scenes. We see Cooper, humanity. We see the ghoul and Lucy 
in just some like real brutal treatment of one another, which, you know, tugs at the heart. We got the Squire and Maximus flipping their their relationship a little bit. Um, we got a lot of good action. And we have, most importantly, I think Norm and the Vault. Interesting things happening there. And by the end, you have the, the whole lore of, you know, the Vault Boy and Cooper being the spokesperson for Vault Tech. I enjoyed it. I would say a little bit more than the first two episodes. It's right on the edge. Thank you everybody for joining us for another episode of Fallout Fans. Please leave a comment and your own thoughts on episode three. We will see you next time when we discuss episode four. Thank you so much. Clay, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching all the episodes and talking about them with me. I'm loving it. Yeah, man. 